Today we're going to be talking about After Finitude by Quentin Mayasu. Now, Quentin Mayasu presents a position called Speculative Realism, which is opposed to a position called Correlationism. There are two opposing views, and Mayasu starts his book by arguing against Correlationism. Now what is Correlationism? For the correlationist, on the one hand, you have thinking. It's what you're doing all the time. You're always thinking. And you're always thinking about something, whether that thing is a tree, maybe a hammer, maybe a person, or even the whole earth. In any case, you're always thinking about being. For the correlationist, you can't have one without the other. What is absolutely essential is the correlation between the two. Whenever you try to posit either thinking or being, you're actually positing the relation between them. Now for Mayasu, between thinking and being, he wants to say that thinking actually isn't necessary and that you can talk about being in itself. You don't need thinking to have being. To understand this, we have to get clear on secondary qualities and primary qualities. Secondary qualities are things like color, taste, smell, touch, really anything that's associated with the senses. Now on the other hand, you have primary qualities. Primary qualities are things like an object's shape, or its extendedness in space, its motion, and its number. Things that are quantifiable. They're the things that you can't imagine the object not having while the object still remaining what it is. Mayasu points to primary qualities because he thinks that the mathematical sciences, like carbon dating, can point to a time on Earth before people or animals existed or to use the correlationist terms, can point to a time when there was being without thinking. The sciences can point to what we might call unthought being, thereby proving the correlationist wrong. Since the sciences can point to a time when life emerged, they can also point to the exact time when the correlation of thinking and being also emerged. Despite all this, it remains that the mathematical sciences originate in the brain, and then they are imposed onto objects. So if Mayasu wants to make his point that being does not require thinking, he needs to give us an absolute being. And that absolute is contingency itself. Something is contingent when it doesn't need to be the way it is. My tie can be purple or green or it could be red or it could not exist at all. And so my tie is contingent. Conversely, something is necessary when it must be the case. A triangle must have three sides, a bachelor must be an unmarried man, and so on. According to Mayasu, everything is contingent, from objects, to people, to scientific laws. There is nothing that must be, and must be in just the way that it is. More precisely, Mayasu believes that the contingency of everything is necessary. It is not that everything happens to be contingent, but rather that everything must exist contingently. Mayasu believes that there is no answer to the question why is there something rather than nothing. Because of this, everything is contingent. Although everything that is obviously exists, there is nothing that need be. Mayasu anticipates the correlationist would respond to this by saying that the correlation of thinking and being is necessary. Mayasu's answer is that, well, it may be true that thinking must lead to being and being must lead to thinking, this does not mean that the correlation itself is necessary, since neither thinking nor being are in themselves necessary. It may be that one necessitates the other, but nothing necessitates both of them. The correlation only seems to be necessary. It is a conditional necessity. The fact of correlation has become necessary retroactively. It only seems necessary once it has already happened. Retrospectively, it looks necessary once it has been made a fact. Now, the principle of sufficient reason says that everything that is must have a reason or a cause. Once something is the case, the principle of sufficient reason can usually explain why it happened necessarily after the event happened by looking back at it. It operates within the realm of conditional necessity. For Mayasu, if one abandons this kind of posterior explanation of why things are and looks for a kind of prior necessity, one comes up empty-handed. Nothing is necessitated, and as such, all that is necessary is that everything is contingent. 
because everything is necessarily contingent, contingency is absolute. Contingency is that which conditions everything else, the entire universe, but itself is conditioned by nothing. Since Meisu has found an absolute, he's found an aspect of being that does not depend upon thinking. He has proved the correlationist wrong. Being itself can sustain and does not need thinking to be what it is.